Welcome to this lecture series that will look at a very important subject area in eye care, which is low vision. Think about it. What is more important than giving back to people something that they thought they had lost forever? That's what you do when you practice low vision. So many people, they have been to the doctors and they have been told about how bad their vision is and that they cannot regain their vision back. So when all hope is lost, that is when we come in. We may not be able to help everyone who comes to us, but those we are able to help, it makes such a huge difference in their lives. That is why the Wills Optometry Postgraduate Education Center and the Optometry Department of Malawi College of Health Sciences has come up with these seven short lectures on low vision with special emphasis on sub-Saharan Africa to let us know the what, the whys and the hows when it comes to low vision. My name is Dr. Abraham and I'll be your guide. Work must always be rewarded and knowledge gain need to be documented. So you can log on to our website to answer a few MCQs and obtain a certificate. You will need your prefix and your code to register and to log in into the course. Your prefix is WOPEC and your code is 1234. The main reason for this course is to make it possible for as many people to know about low vision rehabilitation. We want people to know help is available and we want all those who work in the eye care sector or other related organizations to know what they can do to help. We also hope that it will bring a lot of confidence back to those who have already been trained in low vision to be able to go forward and begin to practice it. To start the ball rolling, we would like to know what exactly low vision is. Low vision as accepted by the World Health Organization refers to the vision of anyone who presents to a hospital and when the vision is recorded, it is found that his best seen eye has a vision of worse than 618 to 360 or his visual field is less than 10 degrees. That is really a long one, so we will try to break it down. When a client walks into the office and you let him or her read the chart on the left side of your screen, which is known as the visual acuity chart, and the person is unable to read up to the shaded area when using the eye which is, then the person has low vision. The line shaded is 618, which literally means that what a normal person sees as 18 meters, the client can only see it clearly when he or she goes as close as 6 meters. The line shaded is 618, which literally means that what a normal person sees as 18 meters, your client would have to go as close as 6 meters in order to see it. When we talk about visual field, we mean the vast extent of our environment which is visible to us when we are looking straight ahead. Like the picture of the trees and the path showed on the right, somebody with a normal visual field would be able to see the whole scenery, while somebody with a visual field loss would see something like this. When this happens, a lot of things around the person would be invisible unless he or she turns the head to look at them. If the area you can see is less than 10 degrees when the optometrist or ophthalmologist measures it, then you shall be categorized as having low vision. You must note that this demonstration can only be found in very extreme cases. For the benefit of all, we have two cases to look at to help us rightly detect somebody with low vision and provide the appropriate referral if refraction or surgical intervention is unable to reverse it. In the right case, the right eye has optimum vision, whereas the left eye has very poor vision. The case is normal because one of the eyes sees better than 618. In the second case, both eyes see worse than 618 and therefore ends up being categorized as having low vision. Now that we know what low vision is, the next reasonable question to ask is, what causes it? Unfortunately, there is no specific answer to this question. Low vision is caused by a lot of other conditions. The World Health Organization has 10 priority diseases and conditions in eye care that they are all trying to fight against, including low vision. And the most interesting thing is, all the other diseases and conditions can cause low vision. Across the world, the causes of low vision are very similar, as shown in the colors on the pie chart on this slide. 
The common causes are cataract refractive error, glaucoma, age-related macular degeneration, and diabetic retinopathy. Sub-Saharan Africa continues to battle with trachoma, but the war is slowly being won. It must be noted that it is only in Sub-Saharan Africa which has trachoma being one of the major causes of visual impairment, but the war against trachoma is slowly being won. Most of those who are living with low vision are old and over 80% of visual impairment is found in people over 50 years. More women are affected by visual impairment than men, or should I say more women have been recorded to have more visual impairment than men, that is if the men are shy to come out to be counted. At this point I have some good news and bad news. The good news is there is a lot of progress being made to cure eye diseases that originally leads to visual impairment. The other news is the world is growing older. The life expectancy has risen sharply around the world. And the bad news comes in. The prevalence of low vision will grow because the older you get, the higher your chances of getting visual impairment. We would go on to look at visual impairment among children. Children are the least in the society affected by visual impairment. But if a child gets visually impaired, they tend to live longer with the condition. This is a real matter of concern. If an adult gets visually impaired at 50 years and dies at 60, he only spent 10 years being visually impaired. If a child gets visually impaired at 5 years and dies at 60, he has spent 55 years of his life being visually impaired. In Sub-Saharan Africa, the most common cause of visual impairment are associated with poor diet like vitamin A deficiency and infectious diseases like ophthalmia neonatorum and measles. Albinism is one of the major genetic conditions which causes visual impairment. In Europe and North America, most childhood related visual impairment are caused by genetic factors. The associated comorbidities with childhood visual impairment, like intellectual disabilities, developmental delays, and hearing impairment, especially when the cause is genetic or syndromic in nature. The truth is, by the time you find someone with low vision, there is little you may be able to do to reverse the condition, except in the cases of refractive errors, cataract, and some other surgical interventions that you may be able to do. But there are a lot of things that can be done to maximize the use of the vision that the person still has and to be able to help increase independence in the performance of his daily activities. And this is the knowledge we will try to acquire as we go through this course. Finally, we would like to point out that to be able to properly and fully attend to the needs of someone living with vision impairment, we would have to link up with other professionals and disciplines. We need a general practitioner, special school teachers, physiotherapist, occupational therapist, community-based rehabilitation workers, psychologists, and a lot more. It is basically impossible to work alone as a low vision practitioner. You will need support from all these people that have been mentioned and more. Some sometimes you may have to talk to family members, chiefs, and local authority heads in order for you to achieve your desired goals for your client. If you not have some of the professionals mentioned, you should know what is available to you and you have to use those resources. A good welfare system is needed to support people who may be living with low vision because as we will learn, they are at risk of losing more than just the vision they have already lost. Thank you for being part of this lecture. We would like to hear from you in the comment section and we encourage you to go to our website at www.wopec.co.uk to register. You would use the prefix WOPEC and the code 1234. Special thanks to Dr. Barbara Rian, the Director of WOPEC, and Mr. Marek Karas, the Low Vision Module Leader at WOPEC, for their contribution to this work. I hope you have had a great time and so poised to know more. Then join us in our next lecture.